I have always wanted to know how things work. Very early, I understood how much I could learn by taking things apart, especially things mechanical. Soon, I realized that ideas, theories, and histories all could be taken apart, examined, and then imaginatively reconfigured relative to some immediate concern of mine. I mention this to describe what I hope to accomplish with this course. I want all of you to understand how the architecture project is put together so that you might engage, intervene, and transform what you discover in order to address some pressing concern, as for instance, work in your studio. Just as important would be the recognition of the necessity for a theoretical foundation for your work. We will take, be taking apart theories, histories, and practices to understand the logics, methods, and outcomes of thinking and work of the last 30 or so years. This period is rightly considered to be a substantial break from the past in terms of the introduction of computation, advances in material sciences, and radical changes in how the world communicates. At the same time, this intense newness ought not to obscure the larger trails of intellectual work that led up to this moment, and in many cases reveals how the present is less a break with the past and more a continuation of important ideas developing over a long time. A fundamental premise of the course, and for that matter almost everything, is that the architectural project advances through intention. In other words, architects or designers are working through clearly articulated intellectual propositions and testing these through simulations, drawings, models, etc., and eventually constructed physical artifacts. In some cases, the propositions are announced by the author, and we can see how these become realized, although in other instances, the intentions have to be extracted from the work itself. This is an important point. The architecture project ought to communicate its intentions to an intelligent, reasonably educa educated investigator. This, of course, describes all of you, all on its own, and not require outside qualification. This is an important difference between theory and history. Therefore, your own close reading of projects and your willingness to make proposals about what might be going on will be crucial for the best outcomes of the semester. The course is structured around weekly presentations that I will make, starting with the foundation of figural composition. Then I will look at the skeptics of this at various historical moments. So I will discuss the Cubist critique of space and time, the philosophical basis for deconstructing figures, the displacement of the figure for relational fields, the attempts to dematerialize matter to arrive at a formless soft space and then see how these ideas mutate into the world of computation and digital fabrication. The presentations will be loosely chronological, however punctuated by frequent excursions into the past to propose connections across time that reveal how ideas are initiated and developed. The presentations will be mostly pre-recorded. This has proven especially helpful when going over new in somewhat dense territory, so that the presentations can be stopped, rewound, and more easily processed on your own time. On Thursdays, we will meet as a group, although sadly within a Zoom session, to discuss these presentations, as well as the assigned readings. It is hoped that these sessions are open, exploratory, free from anxiety about your not knowing anything, and lively, since this is the best way to internalize ideas and move them into your own work. It is also excellent practice for you to become proficient at explaining your ideas convincingly. Finally, I hope that all of this turns out to be rather fun. Of course, coming from someone whose ideas of fun might be putting ideas together and engaging in recreational spatial computation, you might view this claim with moderate skepticism. As usual, I can be reached by email for questions, advice, or other interesting comments.
consultation.